Hi everyone, in today's module we'll talk about biotic interactions part two, where we talk about induced plant defenses and everything from cellular to leaf level to whole plant response. In video module seven, we started talking about biotic interactions for plants. And in particular, we focused on the harmful interactions with herbivores and pathogens. And then we talked about the constitutive defenses. In other words, the defensive mechanisms that are always present. And plants can use various different mechanisms. We talked about the mechanical barriers and the secondary metabolites that can be used as a defensive mechanism. And today we'll expand on this topic to include the induced defenses. So the defenses that are initiated only after an infection has already started or when herbivory is also present. I'd actually like to start at the cellular level. There's actually quite a bit a plant can do once pathogens have started their infection. And at the cellular level, what we are really talking about is a chain of signaling between different components. So in this case, we'll start here with a pathogen. So obviously we'll have infected a plant and it will create a signal. It's called an elicitor. So we need the elicitor to kickstart these induced defenses. And we also need receptors to those elicitors. So here in the cell wall, here is an elicitor from a pathogen and it's going to be received directly by, by this. It looks like a, a Pac-Man or like a slice of pie has been taken out of this circle. That is our receptor that is going to uh, receive the elicitor signal. Elicitors can also be derived from fragments of the plant cell wall where we have uh, pathogens release enzymes that break down the cell wall and we get these components, the breakdown products from that. And those can actually in turn serve as elicitors to trigger this signaling response. And so again, that will be received by a receptor here at the uh, plasma membrane. And then some elicitors simply will diffuse through and then they'll be bound to some sort of receptor in the cytoplasm of the cell here. And regardless of the pathway, whether it was directly received in the cell wall or some breakdown products were received at the plasma membrane or diffused through and then it met up with the receptor in the cytoplasm, these pathways are all leading to the nucleus. And in here, we get another set of responses that include the production of defensive molecules. And the first group of defensive molecules could be phytoalexins. So these can serve essentially as antibiotics. They are synthesized rapidly under kind of this mode of infection and they can attack the pathogen directly here. So we can see they get produced and then they will directly go to the pathogen. We can also get pathogen-related proteins or PR proteins. And some of these are antimicrobial cell wall attackers. And some are alarm signals to cells that haven't been infected yet. So you can see we have the PR proteins that have been produced. Some will simply travel through plasma desmata and serve as a warning to other cells that haven't been infected or again as acting as kind of like a microbial attacker can go to directly the pathogen and and defend itself that way and finally we can get an enhanced production of polysaccharides and polysaccharides as well as extensins as we've talked about a long time ago um, as components of the cell wall these are going to be enhancers to any barriers and so they will help to reinforce the cell wall, you know, and they actually could block off this plasma desmata. That is essentially as its way to prevent the pathogen from going from one cell to the next. So overall, we get this beautiful signaling between plants and pathogens that can induce several different cellular responses as a way to protect itself against the pathogen infection. The hypersensitive response is also a very common defense mechanism that is induced in response to pathogens. In fact, during the summer, I invite you to go out for hikes and take a look at some leaves. And if you see some that might look something like this, it may not have to be red, it could be actually just all clear. If you see these spots on the leaf, well, there's a really good chance that you've seen the hypersensitive response come into play. 
And once again, this is going to involve a couple of different signaling pathways. So here we have some sort of pathogen that's come into our plant and it's going to serve as this elicitor uh, and be received here and bound to receptor. And inside the cell, this is going to trigger various events that will lead to this hypersensitive response. And what happens here, it's really fascinating actually. In this response, we get this rapid accumulation of reactive oxygen species and nitric oxide. And so this is basically a big burst of toxicity from this accumulation. And this leads to rapid cell death. And the cell death deprives all of the pathogens of nutrients, and it also prevents the spread of infection. And that's because the cells surrounding the site of infection will all die rapidly under this hypersensitive response. So this really restricts the movement. Um, we could get uh, reinforced cell walls as well, and stomates will close. So all of this happens very quickly, within hours. So that's an overall very quick response leading to rapid cell death to try to prevent the spread of the pathogen. But when we get this hypersensitive response, it serves as a signal that then gets transported throughout the rest of the plant. And hopefully we can get some sort of systemic acquired resistance. And when systemic acquired resistance is achieved, then there is a general increase in the resistance of the entire plant to a wide range of pathogens. And this could be from an increase in defensive compounds that get produced as a result of that. So the hypersensitive response, very quick, like several hours, whereas that can lead to a systemic acquired resistance that takes much longer, like several days. So those were the induced responses for something that we really can't see very well, like pathogens. What about the ones that are the most damaging, like the chewing insects? This will primarily involve a wound response, but we still need some sort of recognition of elicitors. So the, again, the elicitors are jump-starting this signaling pathway that leads to this overall defense mechanism. And these are going to be in the form of insect-derived compounds. So essentially, once we get some sort of, you know, crunching or, or eating uh, of, of the leaf material, then some of that insect saliva actually can become the elicitor that jumpstarts an induced defense. And this particular induced defense involves another series of signaling pathways. And actually, I think it's too complex. And it actually, as complex as this looks, I still think that we are in fairly early stages of fully understanding this mechanism. The book does a great job of going through this mechanism so far and all the complexities of it. I don't want to focus on all of the steps. What I'd like to do instead is break this down into simpler components. So let's break it down. So of course we need something, we need the elicitor, right? So here is our not so friendly caterpillar. It is chewing on this leaf at quite a high rate. And at this point in time, we're just gonna call this the local response. So let's break down the local response. So in the local response, we'll just group this into a few different things. So we need the herbivore. And of course that's going to elicit a wound response. And what does that mean exactly to elicit a wound response? Well, any cells that have been damaged in the presence of this herbivore are going to produce something called systemin. And systemin is basically the wound response hormone. So systemin gets produced, it's going to be transported, and then it's going to basically travel to this cell here and this cell, this cell right here is the undamaged cell. So it hasn't been chewed on yet by an herbivore. But the cell is really important. This undamaged cell so far is where we're going to see something produced that's very important for this response, jasmonic acid. And again, everything that is happening in here, there are a bunch of different signaling pathways happening even within this single undamaged cell but I'm just going to reduce the confusion for you and tell you that the main product that we are looking for is going to be 
diasmonic acid. So you can see here, everything is kind of leading to the production of jasmonic acid within this undamaged cell. So that is our local response. So in very close proximity to this original herbivore chewing on the leaves, we get this you know, interesting signaling pathway, but it's all really leading to the production of jasmonic acid. And what happens from there is in this phase, we simply have the transport of jasmonic acid. And the transport is going to happen in the phloem. So the jasmonic acid is going to be transported by the phloem and essentially it's going to target cells. Now what does a target cell mean exactly? Anywhere else where we haven't already had damage done by the herbivore. And here we get something else that's produced that is really important for this response. The jasmonic acid activates the expression of genes involved in the response to the herbivore. So what happens here is a transcription factor causes the expression of a gene that codes for something called a protease inhibitor. So in this section here, this is all really at the target cell. We're getting protease inhibitors that get produced. Now, what's really interesting about protease inhibitors is that they block the action of the herbivore. So essentially, if we have a new herbivore on a new leaf, for example, then these protease inhibitors, if they're produced, they will block the action of the herbivore's enzymes. So what does that mean? Well, herbivores have these lytic enzymes. The full name is actually proteolytic enzymes. Another word for that is protease. So protease basically means uh, an enzyme that is present to help an organism break down the products that, his, that it has ingested. So in this case, if we have protease inhibitors that have been ingested by the herbivore on this new leaf, well, that means the insect digestion can't happen. So because we have inhibited the protease of the herbivore, and therefore the insect is going to have a stunt in its growth and development. It won't be able to get this needed energy for growth because it isn't able to digest any of the proteins that it has ingested from the plant. So because of these protease inhibitors um, that get inside the herbivore, well, that prevents growth, it prevents digestion of anything that it ate. So this is precisely what is going to happen to it if that's the case. So in the end, we basically get uh, a dead herbivore, all because we were just trying to get to this end game of a systemic acquired resistance. So to sum up of this all together, we have our original herbivore here at the local level it is damaging cells. This is going to lead to the production of some systemin. Again, that is the wound response hormone. And that travels to this cell here. Again, this is an undamaged nearby cell. After a series of very complex signaling pathways, we just get, or we want to get, the production of jasmonic acid. The jasmonic acid then will travel through the phloem and then ultimately get to target cells, so those that have not been damaged yet. And here, we simply want to get the activation of protease inhibitor genes. And the protease inhibitors, they're gonna be there, they're gonna be present in these target cells. And so once we are in these leaves that have protease inhibitors, if we get a new herbivore, eating that leaf material, well then the protease inhibitors is going to block the digestion of anything that herbivore ate and therefore stunt its growth and lead to its ultimate death. That's it for today's module. Your main takeaway should be that plants have a variety of induced plant defense strategies against herbivores and pathogens. And these can range from cellular responses where we get the bulk of defensive compounds that get produced. And these have a variety of activities that include antibiotics, pathogen attackers, as well as cell wall reinforcers. 
And finally, that plants have local to whole plant responses to various organisms. And this includes the hypersensitive response at the cellular level in the leaves, as well as a whole plant systemic acquired resistance that includes things like protease inhibitors.